and welcome back to The Sim. In this one, we're on the ground at CYOW. We're hanging out over at the Ottawa Flying Club. Yes, we're at my home base. Uh, this is this is where I fly out of. Uh, we keep the real golf mic tango tango over in this white hangar. Anyway, jumping in, we are talking about the switch panel and the working title CJ4. So let's go ahead and hop in. We've got our Logitech or SciTech, whichever way you want to call it, Pro Switch panel, and it's all set up and ready to go. And yes, we have an online snippet for it. So as always, click on a device, uh, a knob, a wheel, a button, something, so that the lights highlight. Go to online snippets. You're going to want to look for the Pro Switch panel complete device. And in this case, it makes no sense. Uh, this should only be used in the CJ4. And so if you go ahead and you search for me, you're going to find the working title. Type in my name, or at least the beginning of it, you'll filter down. So you're going to find this one, the most recent Microsoft Flight Sim working title, CJ4, uh, basically version 12.7 of the mod switch panel and load the snippet and when it asks replace all events you've got everything you need to get your switch panel up running and working how i put it together so for those of you that want to know how it works well hang around and we're going to go through it starting off on the starter switch so we're going to use this to actually start the plane. Uh, we went through and pulled it apart in multiple ways. And I'll walk you through the starting sequence. Whenever you put it into the off position, uh, there are three sets of events, two of which are important that they only check to make sure that the fuel valve is equal to one before it uh, sets it to zero. Because whether you set it to one or zero, it seems to set a toggle of the switch. So this will make sure it will only toggle it correctly. Otherwise, it will ignore the event. In the off position, it's also going to set the mixtures to lean and set the starters to zero. When we move it into the right position, it is going to fire off the starter. And don't worry, we're going to go through this whole sequence in the plane. So in the right, when it sets into the right position, it is going to set the starter to one. Uh, if you needed to stop the start sequence because you didn't like it, you just turn it back to off uh, and that will hit the disengage button. When you move it into the L position, so your second switch, it's going to make sure that the fuel valve is equal to zero. If so, it is going to toggle the fuel valve for the number two engine to one, and it's going to set the mixture two to rich, and it's going to make sure to also set starter set one to zero. Uh, we'll come back to this in a second. So these first two events, the engine fuel valve and the mixture rich for the second engine, those are needed to press the run button. The reason for setting starter to zero, well, it's okay. That starter shouldn't be on right now. This is because once we have a good engine start, we're going to move on to start engine number one or the left engine. And so there, when we move it to the both position, we're going to set starter number one. And as it starts to spool up when we're ready, We'll hit the run button, which will start the sequence. If we weren't seeing a good start and we needed to stop the starter by switching back to the left position, sending mixture two rich again won't cause a problem. And sending starter one set to zero will press the disengage button. If the engine is starting up and it's looking good, now we're ready to press the run button. We will move it into the start position will send mixture rich. It will also set the fuel valve one to one. So for engine one to a one, if it's a zero, again, making sure not to mess up that run button. 
So you can do unset positions. So if we turn it out of the start position, it's going to set the mixture lean and check the fuel valve. And if a zero set it, or sorry, if a one set it to zero, you've landed, you've taxied up, you can shut down engine number one and get yourself all the way back to the L position, shut down engine number two by continuing all the way to off, or you could roll back through both and then start and perform the start procedure again for engine number one. Pretty cool what you can do. Um, took a little bit of time, but we sorted that out. Moving across, we've got our battery switch, so battery on off. We've got the alternator on off switch, which will turn both the left and right gens on. And we've got an avionics master switch. For this guy, we set it up where we can check events and decide what the on position is supposed to do. Now, what we've done is we're looking at this specific switch. And if the alternators aren't on yet, we'll be smart about that and we'll actually say, hey, master alternator switch is set to zero. Let's instead turn on avionics master two, which is the, is the K event, the SIM event, which will trigger the, the CJ4 to put the avionics switch into dispatch, which makes sense. We don't have the engines running, so we wouldn't have the gens on. Let's check that switch. And if the gens aren't on, we can go ahead, put it into dispatch mode. Off is off, and whether you are in this position or the up position, either one sending the same master set to zero, shuts them to zero. If alternator switch is on, so if we have fired up the engines and we've now enabled the gens, well, we can put the avionics on after engine start, and now we're good to go. That will put the switch into the up position. So even with a two-way switch, we're able to program it to have three states. Pretty cool. Moving on to the fuel pumps. So we've got both electric pump one and two. Uh, when it's switched on, it will set these events. When it switches off, it'll set those two events. Even if they're in opposite states, uh, this is sending the parameters of zero and ones. And so that, that sets the events. We don't have to worry about setting up conditional events. De-ice. So we've got switched on, anti-ice, on, switched off, anti-ice, off. The structural de-ice switch that we want to turn on as well, those, uh, we only have a toggle. So what we've done with them is we've set up a conditional event to first check that the structural de-ice switch does equal zero. If so, switching on, you can send the toggle event. Same thing with the switched off. Since we need to send a toggle, we want to make sure first that the switch in the plane is actually on. Uh, otherwise, it's off, so leave it off. Pedo heat switch is straightforward as well, thanks to having a on-off event that are respected. So you switch on pedo, gonna go ahead, turn them both on, switch it off, it'll turn them both off. Landing gear, so gear down, set gear position, uh, handle position to one, gear up, set position to zero, respects it, works great. Uh, if you want to change these, there's online snippets. Uh, you simply can click on one of these, go to online snippets. And if you go with the default left gear LED, uh, just download that. It'll replace the events and make it the standard um, left uh, gear LED. I use them for fuel uh, so they can give me colors. If the nose gear is, is good, you know, and they don't really fail one of the uh, wheels. Landing light, switched on, set landing light to one. Switched off, set landing light to zero. Taxi light, uh, set taxi light to one, set taxi light to zero. Uh, we had to use conditional events as well. Seems when you try to set this, uh, didn't matter whether it setting it to a one or a zero, it treated it more like a toggle and fired off the event. Strobe lights, one and zero, on and off again. Then we've got our switched on and switched off. We've got our set nav light one and zero. Plus we have a second set of events. Uh, I throw the logo lights on at the same time as the nav light. I had to put it somewhere, so I put it with the nav lights. Beacon, since we have to send the toggle beacon 
uh, toggle beacon lights event as opposed to a set event. We're going to do the check it to zero, toggle it on, check if it's a one, toggle it off. With the panel lights, so when I switch it on, I set the lighting knob master Elvar to 25. So when the knob's at 25, good lighting for night, adjust this value to your preference. Switched off, that's your daytime. So when you set it to 100, it turns the knob all the way to daylight. Then for our cowl flap uh, switch, I use this for our emergency lights and our backup instrument display. We found that the emergency lights, you could use the LVAR, works great. The standby display, we had to find circuit on 49. If it's a zero, toggle the electric circuit and switching off. Check that circuit on 49 is equal to one. And if so, go ahead and send that toggle event. Transitioning back into the sim now, let's go ahead and run through the process of operating our switch panel we sat down in the cockpit, we want to get it on, so we turn on our battery. Our battery comes on and our MFD comes on to show us our engine and, and ECAS stuff. So this is the example where right now if we move that avionic switch, you're gonna see because the alternator switch is not on, it goes into dispatch mode for us. So we see that switch move into the down position. And if we switch it off, it goes off, uh, down into dispatch. So that all works exactly as expected. So if we needed our fuel pumps on, we could go ahead, get our fuel pumps on. Let's go ahead and fire up our number two engine. So we're going to come over here to the starter switch. Now, when we move it to that first position, you'll see the right starter engage. And we're watching our NG rise up. And as that's rising up, we can go ahead now and press that run button watching the I guess I should have said NG I should have said N2 rise up so now we're watching the N1 rise up and we'll go ahead and get the boost pumps off Of course, we're going to have a fuel pressure annoyance. Oh, go away. So engine number two was good. Let's go ahead and start engine number one. So click it into both. Turns on the left starter. Watch the N2 come up. And then go ahead and hit the run button. And now we can get our boost pump off. Should go away. So now those are running. Let's go ahead and get our gens on. So there's our gens. And let's go ahead and get our avionics on. We can go ahead and flip our emergency lights and display on using the cowl switch. Let's go ahead, throw our pedo heat on. See those work. You see that your anti-ice works. 
And then, of course, we've got our landing lights. We've got our taxi light. We've got our strobe. We've got our nav and logo lights. We got our beacon. And then you can see that panel light where it goes to 25. Or in the off position, it goes into day mode. And then, of course, over on the right hand side, we can throw the Landing gear up. Gear. Woo! It doesn't Landing like that. Gear. There's a quick one. We've got our working title CJ4 spooled up, ready to taxi out onto the runway. If you like this video, hey, hit the like button. If you haven't subscribed yet, please go ahead and subscribe. Come along with us next time as we're going to move on to the multi-panel and the working title CJ4. As always, guys, thanks for watching. Have a great day.